I've got my pendulum right here. Me too. Hi, and <laughs> welcome to Spiritual Alchemy Energy, the Energy Transfiguration. It says, yes, prom that's promise where we we're are. Not trying to hip we're not trying to hypnotize anybody either. <laughs> right. <laughs> Tonight I have Dr. G, Dr. Greg Nielsen with us, and we're talking about his book and pendulums. Um, I've got his book here, Beyond Pendulum Power. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't see any guests on my Facebook, but regardless if we have viewers, um, I really want to start with, because um, I want to do exercises. I, I'm happy and, to do that. So what I want to do is to uh, have the audience, if they don't have a pendulum, to be able to grab a piece of string. Yes. Uh, um, a household item, whether it's a ring. Good idea. Yeah. Or yeah. I... Um, everybody has nail clippers. You think a nail clipper would work? Sure. Any any weight on the end of a string or chain okay. will work. Yeah. So, so while everyone's building their little pendulum, let's talk a little I, bit about. I've got uh, my pendulum toolbox right here. Oh, for some do, do you want to instruct us on how to do this? Well, if you want, yeah, we could do that. Uh, first I, of all, you want to have some string. And there's lots of different strings around the house. You can even use a cord. This happens to be fishing fishing line. Uh, awesome. and I use it in my workshop. So you can get a roll of this for like five bucks. It's like a thousand feet, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can make all the pendulums you want. Roll wide, exactly. And then uh, I use, I bought a bunch of fishing weights. Oh. oh yeah, and they're like, uh, they're like a, Here's a little one right here, and there just tie tie the weight to the uh, string, and you to, have a pendulum. And there you have it, right there. So nice. I don't have any of that, so I have a pendulum. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a, and you can use other kinds of string too. It doesn't have to be fishing line. So anything. So like other that. other than a ring or a nail clipper, what other household items could they possibly run and get and I've literally used my car keys. Oh. I wish I had them sitting by my table here. I, I, if I'm Ever? without a pendulum and I want to ask a question, I just dangle my car keys and ask the question. There and you go. Course, yeah. So you can use literally anything that you feel comfortable with at the end of a chain or string. That's it. So make it simple. Make it easy. There, sometimes people get like really uh, all worked up about getting a special substance or it has to be a crystal or it has to be a pyramid shape. That's fine too. But and it has to be weighted a certain way. And yeah. Precise and it doesn't. I just say be comfortable and start off simple and easy. And you can always purchase a pendulum down the road if you can't make it yourself. So, so simple, make it, make it simple, make it easy. Exactly. So for the purposes of tonight, you can go grab your keys or, you know, figure out some way to make a pendulum on your site so you can participate in the little exercises that we're going to do tonight. Um, mm -hmm. And while you're all doing making your little pendulum or grabbing your pendulum, um, you know, part of this process is um, understanding the influences of energy and frequencies. And so... You want to speak to that? Yeah. In this. Let me see if I can summarize it. Uh, first of all, we are energy beings. And science pretty much confirms that. Uh, everything, our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, the cellular structure of our body. So the, we live in a world or ocean of energy. So when you're going to ask a question for the of the pendulum, and it's not like it starts talking, but it has to move a certain way. It picks up on the frequency or the energy of a potential answer or answers to your questions. So you're tuning into the frequency, not only of your question, but of the answer. And in order to do that, you have to be aware of the energy. That, I mean, the more aware of the energy you are, the better you can do that. So I hope that gives a simple explanation to start off with. So, okay. Um, 
Yeah. Um, and it's important to be neutral while, while doing this. Yes. So. Keep in mind, but I don't know, you can actually go on YouTube and, and look at a short episode of uh, uh, Oprah Winfrey, Winfrey show. She had Deepak Chopra on several years ago and he took out a pendulum and he had a pendulum for Oprah. And he uh, said, now focus your mind on the pendulum Oh. And so just for example, I could hold this pendulum here. This one has a chain with a, a crystal. Here's another one with a string and a, a weight on the end. Oh. And focus with your mind and make the pendulum move this on the vertical or on the mm -hmm. horizontal. You could pick whatever you want. Right. And Oprah was sitting there going, well, I can't do that. And all of a sudden mm -hmm. it started moving. And right. It's, so you want to be, oh, go ahead. Sorry. It's really, it's really easy to do. It's very um, easy, to, yeah. To control and manipulate your pendulum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, so, so that's something to keep in mind. You can actually test it out yourself. You can watch that short little five-minute segment uh, on Oprah, and you can follow along exactly what uh, the instructions for Deepak Chopra are. Well, I think people should buy your book. <laughs> It does help. There's step by step, step by because, step procedures in there. Yes, because I try to follow along. Um, Usually, in my workshops, the first thing you want to do once you have a pendulum is you want to set up a system of agreement with your pendulum. Right. I was looking for those diagrams that you. So yeah. there's this. Yes. Little. Mm hmm. And there you have the. Uh, horizontal and the vertical so you can and actually i want our viewers to um you know you can draw this on a piece of paper mm -hmm. and you can see for yourself that you can manipulate the pendulum vertically or horizontally yes and that's exactly what you'll see on that oprah segment easily to find on youtube yeah and so we're gonna go into setting the pendulum. So hopefully yeah. you all got your pendulums ready. Mm -hmm. And of course you can always buy, wait, wait. <laughs> you can buy the book <laughs> and you you can catch up with this or watch it, watch the YouTube video later and go over it. Right, but, right. So then you, one of the things that I would have uh, the, the students do in the workshop is hold their pendulum and hold it comfortably. Sometimes you, it, it's probably wise not to hold the pendulum way next to the weight. You know, it doesn't move that much. Yeah, yeah. You want to yeah. give it a little feel of distance from the top of the pendulum to the, and then you can just ask, show me a yes. Show me a yes. And whatever way it starts to move, that's going to be your yes. And I'll just say for some people, it's a vertical. Some people, it's a horizontal. Other people, it's clockwise. Whatever it, however it moves, start with that to begin with. You can always do variations on your yes and no once you get the initial yes, no. So I would say just notice what it does. Go ahead. Yeah. Is it is it important so, um, in reading your book? You um, well, there's there was a workshop setting where people, mm -hmm. you, well, you didn't, but the the facilitator um, mm -hmm. had their feet on the ground and just yes. what not slouching but yeah in a comfortable okay. position i'm glad you brought that up somewhere comfortable and easy oftentimes it's good to have a table or desk handy because you may want to you know focus on something or write even write a question down on a piece of paper and yes you don't want to be slouching way over like that or just bent back you want to be a little bit upright so, Similar to how you would be maybe when you prepare for meditation. You want to have an mm -hmm. upright back, very relaxed. Uh, don't tense up. Avoid thinking right, wrong, good, bad. I can't do this. I will do this. Relatively emotional, mental, and neutral. You're not for or against any kind of answer. Just allowing it to move on its own uh, once you ask the question and you have a yes-no uh, system in place. And for some people, it's a clockwise as a yes, counterclockwise as a no. Uh, occasionally, I run into people where they just feel too uncomfortable with a pendulum 
and you say, show me a yes, show me a no. They go, well, well I don't know what that means. That just seems kind of strange. And it is, if you're not used to it, it can seem bizarre, like I'm waiting for it to tell me. <laughs> so I, <laughs> another way yeah, another way is to actually set up your yes and no. And I have yeah. that in the book. Clockwise is a yes. And you can yeah. just turn the pendulum and counterclockwise is a no. So you can program it that way too. So there's two different ways. Have the pendulum show you, like we mentioned a minute ago, and just set it up. Clockwise is a yes. So you're going counterclockwise there. That's for a no. That's for your no, exactly. Yes. So then yes. your rest would be probably clockwise. And do you have to reset these after each use or? No, no, it, it, it have to get used to using it so it becomes like a subconscious program where you're just used to having your yes, no system that you feel comfortable with. I just wanted people to know whatever works for you is, is perfectly fine. Because occasionally in the workshops, people say, well, my, I don't get my clockwise is not my yes. I see counterclockwise is my yes. And I say, that's fine. Whatever that's works fine. for you right. is perfectly right. fine. And right. as you start, I say you start off with a yes, no system of answering to start with. And later on, you can do other ways of getting the pendulum to, to, to answer for you or with you. Yeah. Okay. This is my yeah. star cup. I don't want to blow anybody away, but that's I've got my star water here. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Is it really water? <laughs> no, yeah, so far. It used to be wine. It turned into water. <laughs> oh, there you go. The opposite. So, okay. Um, you know, you know, clearing your mind out, yeah. um, focusing on the pendulum, setting the pendulum to yes or no answers. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know if anybody has any questions so far. I, I um, might go back and mention in order to clear your mind, you want to pick a time <coughs> of day or a time when you feel comfortable, you're relaxed. Maybe it's after meditation. Uh, I would say if you're tired, if you're stressed, if you're emotionally upset about something, it may not be the opportune moment or time to do any pendulum readings. Uh, especially if you're doing any kind of a pendulum reading where you're asking something really emotionally you're attached to. Right. Because uh, you're going to make, you will make it answer the way you want based on your bias. So you want to. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you want to really be respectful of the time that you do this. And I highly recommend that you spend a little time rhythmic breathing, relaxation, meditation, and then you prepare yourself to have a uh, successful reading at that point so yeah i want to make my viewers aware that um you have you initially you spent over three years um daily um learning to use and practicing with your pendulum yes and so you you do have some substantial experience <laughs> with this <laughs> yeah i've been using the pendulum i think since about 1970 or so and uh, just for me i was reading i was reading jungian psychology so you might have heard of it uh, carl jung was a famous 20th century psychologist who re really acknowledged the use of the intuition mm -hmm. now i have to tell you in 1970 i read the word intuition i said what's that mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, well, <laughs> I, seriously i was pathetic i mean <laughs> i thought it was r ridiculous but i said so i asked a friend well what's a good way to uh, learn how to develop your intuition. And they had suggested, why don't you work with a pendulum? Hmm. And so that's how I got started because uh, that's why I, I, the second book on the pendulum, the one you just showed is called Beyond mm -hmm. Pendulum Power. Ultimately, what you really want to do is cultivate your intuition so, mm -hmm. so sharp and so acute that you don't really need a pendulum or any other div divining instrument. On right. the other hand, I'm very grateful to have a tool mm -hmm. that'll help me help visualize and see something and sense it with my fingers when I'm holding it and give me an ant help give me some answers that are very intuitive. It's not logical, it's intuitive. And so that's kind of how I got started. So I have, I've had it, do, been doing it a long time and uh, which doesn't guarantee that every time you do a reading, it's perfect. You, you do right, have to pay attention right. to your, your psychological state. Right. Mm -hmm. you, you did speak about um, 
you know, practicing, engaging, um, or well, keeping a, a journal or a diary on, on your readings. Mm -hmm. And that's for another purpose. But um, you get, you also get from that um, your accuracy. Yeah, you want to build up confidence with the pendulum. Uh, obviously, if you're starting with questions where uh, in the in the workshops or when I work with somebody, you can start off with things that um, somebody else might know the answer to already, something simple. Uh, this way you can build some confidence. So I would call them practice or introductory exercise pendulum questions. So you could do something like, well, a um, person could say, well, do I have um, any milk in my refrigerator? Well, mm -hmm. the other person asking the question would know them. and hopefully they're going to be honest. And if they say yes, and there's milk in there, you're building confidence. Now, a lot right. of times, maybe you don't get the correct answer at first. What you don't want to be just get too discouraged. Uh, it takes some practice. If you think you're, some people take to it really quickly, by the way. I mean, they're just really naturals. And other people, it right. takes a little more practice. So you want to be patient with yourself and give yourself mm -hmm. a chance to learn step by step. And that's where the notebook comes in handy because you can write down your questions and keep a log of so how you're doing. That's also, you know, asking questions. You have to be very specific in mm -hmm. the questions that you ask. Exactly. So learning, learning how to do that is... Quite, quite often, I have people ask me things like, uh, is it good for me to go on vacation uh, starting April 14th of 2021? That's a future question. Mm -hmm. That's another issue. We'll talk about that, too. Right, uh, right. And the key word in that question, is it good? Is it good. Good for who? You have to think of the words you're using. And... Uh, the word good can be kind of loaded. You might want to think of it this way. I mean, uh, how healthy is it or how wise is it? How beneficial is it for myself and other people that I might vacation with during that time? The way it looks now. That's a future question. Right. The more you right. go into the future, the more you want to. It can change. Uh, things can alter because the people change their mind. Their emotional energy changes. Their thought energy changes. Society changes. The world changes. Is. So you want to, if you're going to do a future question based on the current conditions, how does it look? As right. you get closer to the event, it gets a little more, let's put it the definitive as a good word, maybe becomes a little more definitive. So uh, wording the question becomes important. That's why when you write it down, you can see the wording on the pad. So when we do practice, I actually go around, look at all the questions and I don't necessarily criticize their question, but I suggest you could possibly word it a little more accurately that way rather than this way uh, using words like should could good bad they're pretty loaded so something to keep in mind and, and that takes practice too yeah it takes a lot of practice let me tell you mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know what am i doing here can i let's ask the pendulum <laughs> oh boy i am happy okay. by the way i just i Speaking of a recent thing that I used the pendulum for, uh, I had to have hip replacement surgery uh, last December. So I was able to, I picked out the surgeon that way because mm -hmm. there's a lot of surgeons. This guy was unbelievably good. I, I left the hospital the same day I had the hip replacement. So mm, awesome. Uh, now my friends, call, they call me the Viana hippie now, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the bald, the bald bionic hippie. <laughs> anyway. You can so get that, a wig. <laughs> well, I have one in the closet, so to speak. But <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. But anyway, yeah. it's, it's a very See, practical tool, and it really helped me a lot because the, uh, the Reno Orthopedic Clinic has so many surgeons. Now, I followed up with that. Uh, and I got my surgeon's name and I went for the first appointment, hit it off, good communication, great staff. But I did ask around too. It doesn't right. hurt to use other skills. 
your intuition right, right. is one beautiful t tool to learn from. But also I did some little bit of research and right. I found out through other people, this guy has done a great job in the past. Oh, you got it. Use logic and reason. Exactly. You want to use all your skills. Intuition alone is great, but you want to use anything else that you can to help you make a decision. Huh. Well, yeah. let's let's ask a question for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. I am looking for a company to do some work for me. And I want to know if I should go with company A. You're looking for a company to do some work with you or for yeah. you? Okay. For me, do you work have, as, and you, collaborate to get something done. You, and you know the name of the companies, right? You have the name already. Yes. Good. Have you met with them? One I have, one I have yet okay. to. Okay, good. So at least you have some clarity of a name. That helps a lot. Yeah. So okay. then you can ask. Uh, I, would, I would think about... How wise is it me, for me to work with this company to X, Y, Z, to improve my business, to whatever build it is this, you're looking for? To build this yeah. project for me. Okay, I'll help build the yes. help or assist or actually build it. See, you know, I'm asking it. a lot of questions to get your question a little more. Exactly. This uh, is a good, specific. this is good. So the audience understands yeah. it's important. So. As clear a question as you possibly can. In the workshops, we sometimes write three or four different versions of the question until you get it real clear. Oh, wow. As clear do as you, possible. When do you have so your next So you're going to go ahead and ask that one? <laughs> you can um, ask what you like. Okay. Is it wise for me to have... Uh, right now, I have no workshops planned. No oh. workshops planned right now. Okay. But who knows? Maybe in the near future. Okay. Hopefully by summer. Let us know. I'm doing a bunch of other things right now. So I've got a new book coming out. Oh, yeah. Can't wait for that. <laughs> What's it yeah, called it's now? It's in production right now where I'm doing. Uh, the new one is called Gateway to Stardust. Okay. Gateway to Stardust. So. That's awesome. Okay. So we're now, gonna are you going to ask that question right now? Okay. Is by the way, right? if you don't want other people. Yo, know, sure, of course. What I wanted to say is... Uh, you don't have to say on air what the name of the company is. You can keep it in your not. mind. Yeah. So, yeah some, that's sometimes why. people, if they're if they're in a public forum, they can ask the question in their mind. Just hold the thought of the question. So right, not, you don't necessarily energy. want everybody around. You. Yeah. Otherwise, other people's thoughts. Oh, yeah, that's the right answer. This is the wrong. No, just your thoughts is what we want. So let's go ahead. It's I see a clockwise a, motion. I yeah. see a clockwise motion. Another thing you could ask as a follow-up question, you could say something like, uh, how wise is it for, I'll say, X, X company uh, to assist or help or produce the project over the next 12 months, over the next six months, over the next three years? Is it long-term or short-term? So you, I, if you have a time in mind that you would like to work with this uh, group, you could actually put that in your question too. Which and, is wise because. Yeah, go ahead. It's wise because you did give an example in your book about asking questions. You had, I don't remember her name. I think it might have been Carol working with, uh, I'm going to call him Bradley, um, partnering in, in a business situation. And it was good at that moment, but then it turned sour. Um, so, <laughs> That's just an example of how things change um, and how you need to follow up and more questions. Yeah. In other words, you could have the, the company could be ideal for you right now. And then maybe six months from now, maybe they're too busy with other clients or people. And sometimes you're not being taken care of the way you want. So you could always double check along the way and see how things are going. But uh, the other thing you bring up here with the a snow question. I'm kind of jumping ahead, okay. but it's in the book, and I think it's important to bring this up. Uh, after you learn how to use a yes-no uh, system of asking questions and getting answers, it's important to develop, uh, I'll call it a uh, scale reading question ability. 
uh, I think I have it in the book, but you can right, actually, yeah. I'm going to visualize, help you visualize a, like a half circle like this, a half circle with a okay. line on the bottom. Okay. So half circle line here, and then you can draw a vertical line straight up and then different rays along the circular outside circumference and write the numbers one through 10 there. Hmm. Hopefully you get the visualization. Then you can actually ask on a zero to 10 scale, how wise is it for me to work with this particular company? How wise is it? I'm not sure if I have it in those charts, but uh, um. that's, yeah, that's something that, that we do in the class, in the class. Okay. So you, and I didn't so get sorry. <laughs> that's okay. And then by the way, what the nice thing about that is instead of getting yes or no only, now you're getting more precise answer. You might get an 8.5. So that means it's pretty high as opposed to just yes or no. I want to, I want to make sure I make that clear as you'll graduate from yes and no to doing scale readings which you get a little more, you more accuracy that way. It's right. more like, yeah. Um, so yeah, to even go further, um, right. I made, I made notes here, but I can't, I think we kind of. You were showing um, some of the charts that are in the book there, which was great. Right, there was, there's one, this one. I think people would be interested in this because my guess would be that you get a lot of love questions. Okay. I missed that. Say that one more. Thanks. My guess is that you get quite a bit of questions about love and relationships. Oh yeah. A lot of that. Uh, it, there's a chapter on that in the book. And what I, you might be able to show, there we go. So for example, say, uh, how compatible am I? At the, at the top of those two columns of circles, you can put a name. You can put your name and someone else's name or two other people's names. And then you go up and down the scale. There's physical, emotional, mental, uh, and spiritual. And anyway, all those five levels. And then on each level, you can ask, I. You can do a yes, no, if you're not used to, if you haven't developed your scale readings yet, are we, mm -hmm. are we compatible on a spiritual level? Yes or no. Are we compatible on a mental level? So spiritually, if you're somebody who's developing your spiritual side and you're very much on a path and you find that you're getting a no on the spiritual, that could be a problem. But mm -hmm. you want to be, you could be aware of that. You might be compatible on other levels. But maybe mm -hmm. not on the spiritual under current conditions because people right. do change. People right. do change. So this is a wonderful, wonderful tool to find out where your strengths and weaknesses currently are in a relationship. So there's a scale in here that you give. So if anybody's mm -hmm. working or wants to work with this particular chart to do a reading, um, maybe... I can't find it. Um, you give a uh, different, like, what is it? Eight, 85 to a hundred percent. You're, 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 oh, you're talking probably, relationship, relationships right now. You're talking about yeah, relationships? the superior. Oh, um, okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So if you're getting like, uh, so as soon as you get into like percentages, so the zero to 10 scale that I've described earlier, well, that, that same as a zero to 100. Every one of those is 10%, one through 10. So you can, if you're getting uh, all yeses right. on your compatibility of uh, the relationship chart, that would be 100% compatibility. Right. Right. I think we all pretty much know nobody, well, unless it's, you know, some advanced right. human being, maybe the Dalai <laughs> Lama, you know. <laughs> I think I'm... I'm a 10 on with the Dalai Lama or something, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but most people you're not, everything changes. So it's a dynamic balance. So if you're getting 85%, 80% uh, compatibility, so 
you maybe you're getting four of the, four of the circles are yes and one is a no. Uh, yeah. So maybe that's an eighty percent. So you mm -hmm. want something with a high compatibility if you're going to spend a lot of time around a person on a regular basis. So I right. think that's what you're talking about. Yes. You know, what's and the compatibility? Then, yes. And then yeah. you went, did you go, didn't you go further into that um, with a, a scale? Yeah, the scale reading. So when I do the pendulum uh, reading for people, I use the scale reading on the relationship to get more precise. And then you can ask questions. Is there anything I or we can do to improve the connection on say, say we have poor communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe the communication is only a five on a scale of 10 and all the other levels are, you know, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine. Then you can ask, what can we do? So you can ask a series of questions. Uh, how, how good a listener is each person? That's a good question on a zero to 10 scale when we're talking. Am I picking a good time of day to have good communication? Maybe you're both tired at a certain point and you're just mm -hmm. kind of vegging out. Don't want to hear any more things. <laughs> you're done, okay. you know, for the day. So <laughs> how to improve your communication and your mental uh, connection. You can actually use this as a functional tool to improve your life. And that that's the main premise of the whole Beyond Pendulum Power book. How can you use this tool to make your life work better, more practical, more successful, more official? Right. You know, like I said, I didn't I didn't get to read the whole book. Um, yeah. I think I lost you. Um, That's OK. I can hear you. I can hear you right now. OK. Circle of subconscious blockages. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, I do all of these different charts for people if they're interested. And sometimes if somebody's having some difficulty in their life repeatedly, and they just, they may ask, you can see a lot of different uh, statements there. Like if you count from the left side over, there's numbers in there. And uh, the fourth number talks about home, family. Uh, thank you for making that larger. Oops, but uh, that's okay. But you can see it. There we go. It says home, uh, past, family, psychological roots. OK, so say I go around and I ask all these 12 different areas and I get a very low number in that uh, pie shape number four. OK, it could be that you're some conditioning from your family upbringing that is pretty intensely sort of locked in your belief system and your subconscious at that point. And it may be mm -hmm. you're not aware of it. And if you learn to release that, we can, you can ask questions about how to release it and reduce it. Mm. Uh, you can actually improve what you draw to you. The law of attraction, I guess they call it. You can mm -hmm. attract a better lifestyle in that area or better circumstances in that area. And of course, there's I have 12 different areas there. So mm. it, you can help narrow things down and help the person or yourself improve how your life is lived from day to day by releasing subconscious blockages. So that's the purpose of that chart is to identify what the issue be. Worry about it mostly or keep thinking about it. Start to do something about it and make a change. Because what happens is if you think about a problem or an issue repeatedly over and over and over, you actually pretty much make it worse. <laughs> In yeah, a sense, you know. Right. Yeah. So I a, go ahead. I have a question about this chart. Ooh, yes. I'm trying to get my chair up higher. Sorry. Um are these items that you have in each pie slice um correspond does do these correspond to um the zodiac or the yes. astrolog? Okay. Yep. These are the uh, different houses of the Zodiac. Ah, and go. so that's just one way you can use astrology. And you can look at where am I not having good flowing energy in my life? Hmm. You can use the different houses of the Zodiac. So you have houses one through um, 12. It doesn't relate to your chart necessarily. 
Right. It relates to energy, the energy of your own subconscious. It might relate to your chart. I'd have to look at the chart too, which sometimes they have me take a peek at their chart at the same time mm. and to see what the correspondence might be there. Interesting. It's right there in your chart too. Yeah. Hmm. I'm sorry. One, one, one of the most pop, one of the most popular uh, charts is the first one on that uh, row. It's called the Wheel of Whole Living. I get a lot of people asking about that one. They they like that because that one you get a quick picture of where you're uh, balanced or balanced in your life on the current conditions. Sometimes I actually write down the date on the page oh. as of today, right right now, in the cycle of activity that I'm in now. How balanced am I in each of these eight areas? Physically, emotional, mental, creative, social, financial, uh, spiritual, and regenerative. Regenerative just means the ability to, to uh, get a good night's sleep, recharge your energy, use meditation for that. Uh, you're not on low energy all the time. And a lot of times you can spot uh, some something there like, for example, if I get a lower number in the mental area, it could be the person is thinking way too much and they're draining themselves. Mm. I'm sure some of your uh, watchers and listeners uh, have had experiences mm -hmm. where they can't turn off their mental thinking at night. Mm -hmm. And they're up half the night thinking about something they don't want to think about. Really. <laughs> they get caught in, kind of in a net of just repeated, uh, almost like a squirrel cage or like a hamster mm -hmm. in a cage. Mm -hmm. And you're actually draining your energy and that would show your mental body is a little bit unbalanced. So then you can start narrowing down specifics. What can you do to change that or improve it? Or you can go to the physical. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe it's a lower number. So how is your diet? How is your breathing? How's your sleep? Uh, how, how's your exercise regimen? Are you getting out, getting fresh air? So you can start narrowing things down. And uh, that's been a real popular chart. That's one reason I've in, in my list of charts, I usually put that first because you get a nice picture of an overview in a person's life. Uh, if you meet a creative person who has a low number in creativity, uh, that means that they, they're not spending enough time expressing their creative energy. Creative people, they have to be creative. It's not creative. And so sometimes life's abilities and demands, uh, they're not allowing the free time to be creative. So. You can spot that sometimes there. So it's it's a wonderful tool to get a quick snapshot of psychologically where you're at more right now. That's that's very interesting. I kind of played with that last night a little bit as I was reading and and now, you know, asking more questions and and maybe, you know, having a couple of these. And I want to let our viewers know you don't need a perfect circle to do this pie shape. No, you can not at all. free you can freehand it. So exactly. the, the, you can journal these like every week or every mm -hmm. month to see where you're at, to gauge where you're at, where you need to go. So. I'll tell you along those lines, what you just said is a great thing. If you say pick the wheel of whole learning, a uh, whole living and you do it once a week or once a month or on a regular basis and you start to keep a chart or your readings and like a notebook, you don't have to have, like you say, a perfect circle. You start to see a pattern over time. And a lot of times when you practice this, say over, depends on the person, a week, a month, a year, it becomes almost a habit. You can actually just look at it and you'll start to say, gosh, you know, I really haven't uh, put enough time into my meditation. I think this, I could see why the spiritual is a little bit off right now. You get really more tuned into yourself. And of course, in the ancient mystery schools of Egypt and, uh, and Greece, uh, the main thing was know thyself in true proportion. And those were the initiates. They actually learned self-observation, self-remembering, and self-knowledge. And the, the greater their self-knowledge, the greater the knowledge they had of others. And so mm. this is a great self-knowledge tool to improve your self-awareness. Well, I'm going to have to finish this book. I tell ya. <laughs> you. Know, I'm going to have to reread it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I know, right? You write something, and it's like, and then you go back, and it's like, man, that's a good book. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I, there's no way I wrote that book, uh -uh. <laughs> right? <laughs> no way. I'm not that good a writer. 
<laughs> so I was, I'm, imp I pr impressed myself after I read my book. I was like, ooh, you and didn't give yourself it, enough credit. <laughs> yeah, it's fun just to hold it and go like, is it possible that I wrote this? I mean, <laughs> right. And you've done like quite a few, you know. Um, it it gets to be a habit, <laughs> but it's fun. And I'm a creative person, and it's part of my creativity comes through writing. So when I write, it makes me feel good. Yeah, I I'm gonna have to be creative, you. have fun, and I do it. So that's one reason I write a lot. Yeah. Does he write a little bit? I like the picture. I like that. Oh, there's a few of the there's a few of the there. They're on Amazon and on my Patreon. Uh, so. I think I have uh, see ten more there on digitally. Uh, oh, my Patreon, it's Patreon.com forward slash Spiritual Frequencies, and there I I don't think I have all ten up there, but I have I think eight or eight of them, eight of the ten up there, or seven of them. I'm gonna eventually get them all up there, but I. So I wanted to share this. So thank you for that. You can and you, you can see I had a too. previous book. I had Pendulum Power was the first book, and that's this a really one, yes. good introductory book, the one with the pink cover, and it has a nice history of the pendulum, where it comes from, how it was developed, who's been using it over the years. Uh, so it has a nice background. The Beyond Pendulum Power is a little more practical, like specifically how to improve your life using the pendulum. Although right. Pendulum Power touches on that, it doesn't go into great detail as much as a beyond pendulum power. So they're kind of a set. People have uh, read them, but actually published with the world. Books. So I'm very grateful for that. Wow. And by the way, there's a lot of other books on the pendulum. I mean, you know, I mean, if you go on a store or on Amazon, you're going to see a lot of books on the pendulum. There's plenty there. And there's, and if yeah. you feel like you want to buy a pendulum, there's plenty of places to buy pendulums today. There was a time when I started, you really couldn't find any place to to get a pendulum wow. uh, that, that much. It was just beginning to become a little more popular in the 1970s and 80s. And now, of course, you can find them on Amazon. You can go into a there's a crystal shop down the road here where I live, mm -hmm. where you can go mm -hmm. in there. They have a whole pendulum section with uh, beautiful different crystals on the end and gemstones. So there's plenty of opportunity. And of course you can make your own, no big deal there. So, but right. still today, there's a lot of information available. When I started, uh, very little, most of the writing on the pendulum was done more in England and France at that time. Interesting. And there's quite a few books. Yeah, the French and the English did a lot with the pendulum. And, and then of course you have to think about the word dousing, which is mm. people think of water dousing using divining rods. But a lot of mm -hmm. dowsers uh, are very interested in using the pendulum for finding water. They use an app and they look for water first. And of course, they know both for divining and divinological issues like and beyond. And for your listeners uh, and watchers of mm -hmm. and learning more, you can actually. Uh, Go online and go to the American Society of Dowsers, which they've been around since the 1920s. The American Society of Dowsers has, they have a store, they have workshops, uh, they have all kinds of things, and they have national conventions. So hmm. they, they alternate years. One year they'll have it uh, in Vermont, which is their headquarters, and then one year they'll switch the other year and have it in California, usually in Santa Cruz somewhere. And there you can spend four or five days around multiple people who are practicing using the pendulum. And so there's some wonderful talks and presentations that are wonderful and helpful. I've, I've been to several and I've spoken there. Of course, now it's all virtual, but just oh, so you know that you're, <laughs> you have support out there. There's a lot you can learn. There are people that'll help you. Yeah. I, I was watching another podcast and, um, they recommended um, dousing rods. They recommended dousing rods versus using a pendulum because it was you're able to hold them 
close to your body and not mm-hmm. in, influence as much as the pendulum. Can you speak That's to exactly that? That's exactly right. Yes, if you're outside, say uh, you're going to be a water dowser or you're dousing for minerals or you're dousing for how the, the, the quality of the land, say you're going to buy a piece of property and you want to, mm-hmm. before you have an engineering firm come check out the soil content and the stability, you just want to check and see the vibe, kind of the vibration of the area, that how mm-hmm. it feels. It'll help you pick up on the energy of that particular environment. If you're walking along with a pendulum, it'll it'll start. You're going to make it move and swing because mm-hmm. you're walking. But with a dowsing, you can actually kind of hold them in. There's a several mm-hmm. different kinds of dowsing mm-hmm. rods, mm-hmm. Uh, but you, you get a little more stability. So you can ask like, uh, when I come across any kind of negative. Say you're looking for water. Maybe there's water on your mm-hmm. land because you're going to build a well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can program your dowsing rods to cross when you come across where the water is, and then mm-hmm. they'll cross. Now with the pendulum, if you're walking, like I say, walking along, it it's going to be hard to tell because it's already kind right. of rotating just from the motion of your body. And so that's where they use the dowsing rods. And there's a couple of different kinds, but. Uh, you can learn that from the American Society of Dowsing. And there's books specifically just on water dowsing or dowsing for minerals. Um, yeah. Are you are you able to, you're able to ask dowsing rods yes or no questions as well, oh, yes. correct? Yeah. So you could say, you could program it like when the, ask a question and the <laughs> rods, so you have two rods. They're, it's kind of like a little L-shaped. Mm-hmm. When they cross, that's my yes. If they don't cross, that's a no or vice versa. Whatever mm-hmm. way works for you, you can split that program. And right. that's that would be your yes and no, yeah. But by the way, if anybody wants to um, make some dowsing rods, I heard coat hangers work great. So. Yeah, that's a great idea, yes. <laughs> I've seen people do it at these different presentations. They actually have a coat hanger for everybody and then they make them and then they go out and practice. Okay. Do you have something that my viewers can practice with the pendulums that they made? Um, um, like, like an exercise, you mean? Or yeah, a, just like let's do a little exercise. Okay, so, you, know. you can you can do two things that I usually do. One, go back and have a list of questions. Um, usually, for beginners, I'll say let's write. They'll have a partner. They work together, like mm-hmm. two people. Maybe they're there with a friend or. So everybody kind of partners up and one person writes down questions they know the answer to. I talked about the idea of the milk in the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you might say, do, do, I have, uh, do I have a garage? Do mm-hmm. I have one, uh, uh, do I have one, uh, do I have two garbage cans out front of my house? Just silly questions like that. Things you right. know the answer to. Then the other person gets a chance to practice. Maybe have five or 10 questions. And then you see how you do, and then you switch off. Okay, so that's for practice. But then it's really important to actually do something that's a little more meaningful. So we'd like to graduate from practicing to having something more meaningful. Uh, Now, when you start asking questions for yourself, the more emotionally tied you are or emotionally biased you are, the more you can influence the pendulum. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you want to maybe start with things like you did which was a really good thing about work and and working with people. Uh, So say you have a job, you could ask, uh, you could write a series of questions down. If I, I'm just gonna make one up. Mm -hmm. If I communicate with my boss on a more regular basis, will that improve my job performance and the possibility of earning a better living at my present position? Yes or Mm -hmm. no, okay? Then you can ask, say it says yes. Is it wise for me to uh, uh, meet with my boss for a few minutes every other day or once a week or once a month. You see what I mean? That's real practical. And it, mm-hmm. you're still emotionally uh, involved in that, but it's not so much where it's a life or death question. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, things like getting, when you start talking about sur- picking a surgeon for my surgery, that's a little more nerve wracking because you know, yeah, <laughs> these things can go wrong, you know. <laughs> right. That's a big yeah. decision. <laughs> That's a bigger decision. And who is my anesthesiologist? That was important mm. to me, too. Are right. they making sure that they, they're going to put me under and want to come back out? 
<laughs> so right and, exactly <laughs> so that that was a little more i'm used to doing it so it didn't bother me so much but if i was a beginner that could make me a little nervous right uh, is my answer right. right is it accurate can i depend on it so you can see the value of building confidence confidence is a big plus yeah so like on your on that first chart mm -hmm. the will of whole living oh the wheel of whole living yeah yes um financially you can go in there and mm -hmm. and ask questions about how to earn more money yes. or, or changing jobs or yep. exactly so if you got what? a lower number say if you're using a zero to ten scale mm -hmm. or you get a no you can ask well what can i do to improve my financial status mm -hmm. can i should i is it wise to do a b c d you could write down several things and see what you get and you'll start narrowing things down what all of this does is starts to sharpen your intuitive uh, ability and i've seen over time when a person works with the pendulum or any other high quality divination tool their intuition gets sharper and sharper and sharper until at a certain point it's sort of a tipping tipping point you actually start to know the answer before you actually take out the pendulum because you've done it so much. Yeah. Right. It's kind of bizarre, right. but you, your intuition sort of kicks in and you get a, you get a feel, you get a thought. And so you start to become more aware of uh, how to choose paths in your life that'll, that are more beneficial and that lead to like more uh, happier results. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Making wiser decisions. Yes, making and then you can check it out. Uh, you actually make it. I'll give you one quick example. So it was about ten years ago. Mm -hmm. I was in between jobs and I was uh, working on uh, some uh, uh, my PhD. Maybe it was fifteen years ago. I forget now. My time mm -hmm. is getting mm -hmm. off. But, uh, so I made a list of 10, 10 ideas that I had mm -hmm. that came to me or people suggested. I went through all 10 asking the pendulum and I'm making a long story short, but one of them was, is it wise for me to apply for a teaching assistant job at the university? Mm -hmm. Now, everybody on a logical level was telling me, no, that's not possible. There are no teaching positions of teaching assistant positions available and they're all taken up and they're not hiring anymore. But I got a nine and 10 on a scale of nine and 10 each time I did it. So I said, what's the big deal? So I put together the packet. I followed all the directions and I put it under the door of the place you're supposed to drop it off uh, before one day before the deadline. Mm -hmm. And two weeks later, I get a call. Uh, we just had a person drop their TA position that we were counting on. Are you available? I said, there sure. You go. <laughs> and then two weeks later, someone else dropped. So I got two positions, which means rather than uh, you know 20 hours uh, mm -hmm. 20 hours a week i actually got 40 if i wanted it no no wait. 10 hours to 20 hours total 10 and 10 so i had 20 hours a week as a teaching position teaching assistant position which reduced my cost of, uh, of uh, tuition dramatically anyway oh. it, it went against completely what everybody thought and of course i was doubting myself even asking the question am i wasting my time uh, all mm -hmm. the experts tell me and that was a good example where the pendulum actually really made a tremendous difference because I followed what the answer was. It didn't cost me a lot. Just had to put together a packet of what they wanted and, you know, hand it in. And that, that really stood out in my mind as uh, the benefit of using your intuition and knowing your own path is unique to you. And uh, what other people say doesn't necessarily count when it comes to what your decisions ought to be for your life. Yeah, we so were that, just talking yeah. before this and you were telling me how Paul McCartney's music teacher told him to quit playing music. <laughs> yeah. He said in Liverpool, he, when he was in grammar school, I guess that's elementary school. He said, he, he told, tell, he told the story of how his uh, music teacher in grammar school said, your musical ability is so poor. I don't suggest you continue. <laughs> He's Paul McCartney. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> good thing he followed. I don't think he used the pendulum, but I think he followed his heart. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, which is a very good tool also. 
Yeah, it's um, yeah. big energy center to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, follow your heart. If you can feel your heart energy, that's the best pendulum in the world right there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm wondering, um, okay, what is that called? Muscle testing. Oh this yeah, muscle similar testing. To, similar yes. to muscle testing. In fact, I've had uh, people at my workshops who I, I, they told me that they did that and I asked them to actually go ahead and would they be willing to come up and demonstrate the muscle testing? So you can ask a question and I, their technique, I don't understand all the details, but you, they hold out the arm and then they, they mm -hmm. push down on it. Mm -hmm. When they ask the question, if, if you're really strong and you don't collapse your arm, that one might be, yes, that's very good for you. If your arm oh. collapses energetically, it's not that compatible for you. I'm simplifying that, right. but right. it's a very similar thing. Your, your body knows instinctively the gut feeling that there's something that's wonderful for you there. Uh, there are certain Native American tribes when they would look for the buffalo, uh, their medicine person, man, woman, whoever it was in charge there, would hold out their finger, uh, index finger, there we go, like that, and and then just turn in a circle. And then when oh. their tip of their finger kind of twitched, that's where the buffalo are. Let's go, we're gonna ride our that way toward the buffalo. So all of those things are similar to the similar principle to using the pendulum. So you have yeah. It's all energetic. Exactly. It's an energetic and whatever works, go for it. I'll have sometimes people tell me, well, I don't really need the pendulum. I I I do other things. I said, fine, you, you don't need this workshop. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're, you're, the, you're there. I'll refund the money. <laughs> Come on up and teach us, you know, <laughs> help <Right>. us out. <laughs> I'll take we your money need, and you can teach us class. <laughs> exactly. I'll split it with you. <laughs> so, no, it's, it's, so I, I'm encouraging anybody who has an ability to be, uh, feel their way and sense things, use that gift. In whatever way it comes out, that's that's what I would suggest. Yeah. Have you ever tried your hand at um, automatic writing? Well, I am a writer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? I mean, that would really come in useful, but um, I, I'm not. It doesn't come that automatic, but I know what you mean. You just mean to sit down and whatever comes to mind. Right, right. Does it flow on the page? Uh, not really. I haven't done that too much. Oh, by the way, I do I do write poetry. Oh, and so sometimes when I write poems, it's almost like automatic writing. Mm -hmm. uh, I do Instagram poems. I'll post them on Instagram, or I do text message poems to my mm -hmm. friends. I'll respond by a text message poem. That is almost like automatic writing because it's a spontaneous flow of words. I don't really think about it too much. I just go do it and put it out there. Now some of them are like very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're saying, but <laughs> some of them are fun. And some people like them. <laughs> so you could, you could, do you do slam poetry then? Mm -hmm. You do? I'm really concerned about, well, I, I, I'm a little concerned about the automatic writing because especially when you text, because sometimes the auto spell can spell something yeah, you don't auto correct. <laughs> right. Then you insult people. Oh <laughs> that really screws me up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I try to read it over before I actually send it off. <laughs> so I'm not causing a big problem. <laughs> oh, I want to wow. keep my job. Let's put it that way. <laughs> right. <laughs> I am a teacher at the university. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to. Like, I don't need yeah. a bad texting. Yeah. <laughs> don't need that. No. <laughs> but. Uh, well, uh, do you have anything coming up that outside of your book? Your book again is. Is the new book which isn't yeah. out yet, is Gateway to Stardust. I'm halfway through the final edit. I already have a graphic designer and she's putting together the book and waiting for my final edits. And this book actually has photographs in it. Uh, I have a whole section on the mythological patterns and tattoos. And I have photos of the tattoos and I do a mythological analysis of the tattoo. And then I have a mythological analysis of uh, Harry Potter's first, the Harry Potter first book. Uh, uh -huh. So I did that. 
a, a, an artist who did paintings. I do the mythological breakdown of her evolution in her paintings. That's just part of the book, but it's a little bit different. So it has photos in there, which so has a color quality to it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. It's gonna be and, it's gonna be fun. And don't forget to check him out on Amazon. Dr. Greg Nielsen on Amazon. He has tons of books and patron. Patreon.com forward Patreon. slash spiritual frequencies. Spiritual frequencies. Yeah. Right there on Patreon. Patreon. Um, I post every single week. Every every week's a post. Yes. So there's hundreds you, of things up there. Do you also have a YouTube channel? Yes, my YouTube channel is is there. Uh, I actually make my YouTube channel is all public. So even though I post it up there on uh, on Patreon, you can also find it Spiritual Frequencies Online Academy on uh, YouTube. Okay, you're gonna have to let me know when you have some workshops coming up. But go get this book. <laughs> Get the and book. It's a workshop. Book. Exactly. Thank you so much for your kindness. I appreciate that. Thank, thank you for being here tonight. Yeah. I really enjoyed our time together. It's fun. And I it have is. star water. I'll share it with anyone who wants some. <laughs> well, I'll come over. Where do you? <laughs> I, I can't. I'd the, have to walk right now. I think, I'm, I think I'm in the same building you're in. I think I'm down the hall here. <laughs> No, I don't have cottage cheese ceilings. <laughs> I don't thank you. Well, I did where I was. I thank you so much. You make it fun. You have a good sense of humor. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Greg. And I want to thank all our viewers tonight. Please go check out Dr. Greg Nielsen on his um, website. Um, you could probably follow him on Facebook, Instagram. I know Instagram. you're on Instagram. Dr. And, G, um, Dr. G Frequencies on Instagram. Dr. G Frequencies on Instagram. Yeah. And um, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and any other social media you can find me on. And my website, JillianGethrieSmolson.com. And thank you again, everyone. Have a good thank night. Thank you, too. Adios.